But for you to reference Jim Crow, a time where you couldn't even be married to your wife, you would have been killed in, if we were in Jim Crow times, you would be hung because of who you decided to marry. So help me understand how that was a better time for black people. Melanie P. This show is, to be honest, on a very low calorie, high protein mm -hmm. diet. To be honest. Welcome to another episode of the That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. I am your girl, Melanie P, and we are here to have a conversation. So on today's episode, we are discussing Congressman Byron Donald's remarks in a recent event that he was at um, where he referenced Jim Crow laws. Now, before we get started, y'all, make sure you hit that like, that comment button. If you have any suggestions for um, episodes or anything that you think would be great to discuss and have a conversation about, please let me know. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, TikTok. Shoot me an email. Let's get it started. All right. So one thing about me is I am not someone that is super invested and honestly not 100% um educated in politics. To be honest with you, I vote because of my ancestors and I try to understand what's going on. Um, but sometimes it can be so overwhelming um, that I sometimes I just try to steer clear from it. It's just a lot of, it's one white man against another white man and we got to choose from the, you know, the lesser of two evils and it could be a lot. Um, However, I found it very interesting uh, to hear the reference to Jim Crow laws by Congressman Byron Donalds of Florida. He's a Republican, he's a conservative, and he basically stated that black people were much better off during the Jim Crow laws. Now, I'm going to dumb this down because I really want us to have the conversation and be educated on exactly what the Jim Crow laws were um, so we can make our own decision to see if we were better off during Jim Crow. So Jim Crow laws were a collection of state and local statutes that legalized racial segregation named after a black minstrel show character. The laws, which existed for about 100 years from the post-Civil War era until 1968, were meant to marginalize African Americans by denying them the right to vote, hold jobs, get an education, and other opportunities. Those who attempted to defy Jim Crow laws often faced arrests, fines, jail sentences, jail sentences violence, and death. The roots of the Jim Crow laws began as early as 1865, immediately following the ratification of the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery in the United States. Black codes were strict local and state laws that detailed when, where, and how formerly enslaved people could work and for how much compensation. Um, the codes appeared throughout the South as a legal way to put black sentence, uh, citizens into indentured servitude to taking voting rights away to control where they lived and how they traveled and seized um i'm sorry and how they traveled and to seize children for labor purposes the legal system was stacked against black people excuse me black citizens with former confederate soldiers working as police and judges let me repeat that sentence the legal system especially during during jim crow was stacked against black citizens with former Confederate soldiers working as police, judges, making it difficult for African Americans to win court cases and ensuring they were subject to black codes. These codes were in conjunction with labor camps for the incarcerated, where prisoners were treated as enslaved people, black offenders typically received longer sentences than their white counterparts, and because of the grueling work, often did not uh, live out their entire sentence i'm going to play uh a conversation between representative uh donald byron donalds on the read out show and i want you guys just to to take this in i thought this was great i thought this was a great conversation and i thought he backpedaled and pussy popped around the whole conversation let's play it recent comments by florida congressman byron donalds have been 
condemned by House Minority Leader Kareem Jeffrey, Hakeem Jeffries, the Congressional Black Caucus, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison, and the president of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, just to name a few. In those comments, at an event designed to help Republican outreach to black voters in Philadelphia earlier this week, Congressman Donalds made what certainly seemed like positive comments about the Jim Crow era, and he claims his critics are missing the context of what he said. So, here's the context. I grew up with my mom. My dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened, but you my father and I love you. Wow. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm gonna tell you this. Coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to myself. Wow. Uh, and so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the re in the reinvigoration of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then, H.E.W., Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I'll say it because it's my contemporaries, it's Wesley's contemporaries, you're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. It's when you home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, oh, wait a minute, time out. This does not look right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Not just having a job, generational wealth. I am joined now by Florida Republican Congressman Byron Donalds. Congressman, thank you for being here. Um, we played that lengthy segment. That is what you posted on your social media. The part of uh, what you said that people take issue with is this line, which I'm going to read back to you again. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative. Black people have always been conservative-minded, but black people voted conservatively. Um, but it is that during Jim Crow, the black family was together. That's what people have taken issue with with, take an issue with. What are they missing? Uh, frankly, what's really happened is, is that you have, uh, you know, Democrats and you have the Biden campaign and some of the media want to twist my words for political purposes. The overarching issue is talking just about black families and why you're seeing a trend of black people leaning towards Republicans in this election cycle and probably in election cycles to, to come. And part of that in part is that when you're raising families, raising kids, et cetera, you're now thinking about all of the public policy issues, all of the economic issues, all of the education issues. And that's leading people to have divergence in political thoughts. That was the only point. The stuff that comes up about Jim Crow and twisting my words saying I was being nostalgic or saying that Jim Crow was good for black people, that's all political spin, it's a lie, it's gaslighting, and that's truly unfortunate. So here's the challenge, Congressman. You started out talking about your family, talking about your mom, talking about being raised, and you on your own, brought up Jim Crow. In fact, you said Jim Crow three times for emphasis. It wasn't the media or the Democrats or gaslighters who brought up Jim Crow. It was you. You brought up Jim Crow. So why did you use Jim Crow specifically as your reference? You did that. No one else did that. You did it. Oh, I did. We were having a conversation just talking as, you know, black people in Philadelphia. But if you're going to use the, 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 the chronological timeline of America before the Great Society and Lyndon Johnson's uh, mm -hmm. time period, you had, unfortunately, the Jim Crow era in America. During that time period, the marriage rates 
of black Americans was significantly higher than any other time since then in American history. So it is a divergence if you're talking about marriage rates in the black community. They have plummeted. And what we've seen recently in America, which is a very good thing we should all celebrate, is that the marriage rates in the black community are rising again. That's good for black families. That's definitely good for black children. It's something I want to see. I'm quite sure you want to see it as well. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, Jim Crow uh, lasted roughly from 1867 after the Civil War to 1968. Is there a specific period between 1867 and 1968 that you thought was this golden era for black families or a time that was good for black families? Joy, I never said that. And see, this is where the gaslighting comes in. No, no, I'm going to read in. what you said. All no, I was no, talking no, about on. was the marriage stop, rates. Stop. No, nope, that's not what you said. Let's play what you said. Play what he said. Play what he said. Families. You're play saying what he I said. said it was the golden era. I'm I never play, said that. I'm You're gonna saying play what he said. I said that it was better I'm going to play what he said. I never said that. I play what he said. Play what I said. Play what he said. During Jim Crow, the black family was together. That's right. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then HEW, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. You said during Jim Crow, the black family was together. What was the authority of the black father in the black family during Jim Crow? Well, listen, under Jim Crow, obviously, black people were under great persecution, unfortunately, by Southern Democrats and the Democrat Party overall so what in the history of our country. That's the fact. And so, well, let me finish now, Joy. And so having the black man in the home was about first protecting the, the mom and protecting the kids. Incredibly important. It was the leadership in the home which is incredibly valuable. And I think what we're witnessing, obviously the last 30 years, definitely through my generation, is black fathers being at home is incredibly important for the success of black children going forward. And it's not just a black thing, that's everybody. Fathers in home help to breed success for kids moving forward. That is that is a great thing for our country. That's something that should just, has been proven throughout time. So what I'm talking about is not the golden era of Jim Crow. That's ridiculous. I would never say that. And that is the gaslighting that I'm standing up to because that's what Hakeem Jeffries, the Biden campaign, Jamie Harrison and the like are trying to be up, uh, trying to bring up. And unfortunately, the media has followed suit with misleading headlines and that's wrong. Now I'm going to talk. Do I have a chance? Good. Now you talked sure, about the black yes, father ma'am. being the black father being in the family, being able to protect the family. First, I want to read just for our audience the history, I mean the definition of Jim Crow, just so we all know what we're talking about. Jim Crow laws were a collection of state and local statutes that legalized racial segregation. Uh, they existed essentially from the post-Civil War era. They were meant to marginalize African Americans by denying them the right to vote, hold jobs, get an education and other job opportun- and other opportunities. Those who attempted to defy Jim Crow laws often faced arrest, fines, jail sentences, violence, and death. Now I want to talk Talk about something that happened during this era. You said that what you were talking about was the presence of the black father in the home to protect his wife and family. In 1943, in the state that you represent in Florida, a young man named Willie James Howard, who was 15 years old, was lynched. During Christmas of 1943, Willie Howard sent cards to all of his co-workers at the Van Priest Dime Store in Live Oak, Florida. Unlike the other cards, Willie's card to Cynthia Goff, a white store employee, revealed a youthful crush. His greeting expressed hope that white people would someday like black people and concluded, I love your name, I love your voice. For SH, sweetheart, you are my choice. After reading the card, Cynthia's father, Phil Goff, brought two friends to the Howard home and demanded to see Willie. Despite his mother's pleading, the men dragged Willie away and then kidnapped Willie's father, James Howard, from work. The men drove the two Howard men, to the two Howards, I should say, to the embankment of the Suwannee River, bound Willie's hands and feet, stood him at the the edge of the water and told him to either jump or be shot. Willie jumped into the cold water below and drowned while his father was forced to watch at gunpoint. Willie's dead body was pulled from the river the next day. You said that the 
that during the Jim Crow era, the importance of having a black man in the home was to protect his family and to protect his wife. Um, I actually spoke with somebody who lived through Jim Crow. Uh, her name is Merle Evers Williams. And Merle quoted to me a man named Charles Silverman, who wrote in, um, the cri in Crisis in Black and White, um, that in 1890, the year that the, Recon the uh, Mississippi Constitution was written, the policy of crushing out the manhood of the Negro citizens was to be carried out with success. So the man in the home during Jim Crow had no rights, could not protect his wife from rape, could not protect his son from lynching. So again, why would you quote that era and say that, the, that the, at that time, the family all being in the home together was something we should think of as a good thing? Well, first of all, Joy, the story you bring up and your opinion you're bringing up is a tragedy, one of the great tragedies of the Jim Crow era. I'm uh, this is why, why those policies were totally They were disgusting and distasteful. All so I was that talking era, about, Joy, was, was the, the benefit marriage of a man in the family. Again, sir, I'm sorry, Joy, I've let you I'm talk for a long time. I'm sorry, I only, I'm no, just, no, no, talk over you. You've gotten a chance I'm to speak to a lot, Congressman. To you You're going to answer my now question now and not filibuster. Let, no, That's this is the question you want. This is the question you need to answer. That's what I'm trying to answer. If black men, That's what I'm trying to answer, Joy. Give me a second, take a breath. Take a breath. If a black man could not protect... It's my show. If a black man, a black father, could not protect his wife, his son, or himself from lynching and violence, how is him being in the home mean that that is an era that was better for the black family or that, the, or that we should think of as a good thing? First of, first of all, Joy, I never said that it was better for black people in Jim Crow. I have never said that. And even my own words say that. If you're talking about the importance of black fathers in the home, or frankly, all fathers in the home, it is always for the betterment of children to have leadership, yes, for safety. So having two people in the home to help provide the economic needs for those children so the family can succeed. That is a wonderful thing. We should always get back to that, not to Jim Crow. And this is the point of the gaslighting and the lying that is occurring with what I said. Don't try to impose the fact that the marriage rates were better in the uh, higher, higher, I want to be clear, higher in the Jim Crow era to mean that I think Jim Crow was great. That is a lie. That is gaslighting. I would never say such a thing, which is why you the, the Jim, Crow Jim Crow era you was destructive of black people. You brought it up. You're the All one who brought it up. All right. So that was the video of Congressman Donalds explaining how Jim Crow was a better time for black people. Um, and then it was also, uh, I love this lady. I love her calm rebuttals educated responses to him I thought that you know he was kind of getting a little bit tongue twisted and um she was just prepared she came very well prepared with facts with his words and I feel like he was trying to basically say that he didn't say that when it is recorded and she was able to play the recording um to show what he said now now I'm going to read uh, exactly what he said, just so there's no confusion on what was said. Um, Representative Byron Donald's exact words were, you see, during the Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, Black people have always been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservative conservatively and the HEW Lyndon Johnson, and you go down that road, and now we are where we are. Listen. <sighs> mm, 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 mm. Here's the thing. You know, Representative Donald spoke a lot about the black family, the black family, where the black family was, how it was better. Let's just take Jim Crow out of it for a second, right? Let's just take Jim Crow out of it for a second. You're a black man, a conservative that is for the Trump party. You're talking about wanting to empower black people to vote more conserv conservatively. Um, you're talking about, you know, wanting to empower people, black people specifically to vote for Trump. And you wanted, you're trying to do that via a positive conversation and uh, impact through the black family. But the real gag is that you yourself are not even a part of a black family. I love everyone, love who you love, but you cannot be 
a conservative Trump supporter talking about the positivity that Jim Crow did for the black family, all while not even being a part of a black family and procreating with a white woman. Let's just be, let's just be clear. Okay. As for Jim Crow, there were so many other examples and not even so many, just to be honest, but there were other examples of um, in our history that you could have referenced in a black space where you were trying to persuade voters to vote for Trump, to vote more conservatively. There were other examples that you could have referenced other than referencing Jim Crow. Now, here's the thing. My hope is maybe you are an informant. Maybe you are giving Clay uh, Bigsby vibes and maybe you're just trying to be an ally for black people and trying to mess up the Trump party. I don't know because it, I, I'm trying to make it make sense. But for you to reference Jim Crow, a time where you couldn't even be married to your wife, you would have been killed in if we were in Jim Crow times you would be hung because of who you decided to marry. So help me understand how that was a better time for black people. It's not making sense. And really you are likely pushing black people away from voting more conservatively because of this stupid ass reference that you gave. I made a list of other references that you could have used. The Harlem Renaissance, right? You could have used that. You could have used Black Wall Street, right? You could have used Black Wall Street, right? You could have even used in 1898 in my hometown before the white people came and rioted Wilmington. Now, here's one of the reasons why you probably couldn't use Black Wall Street or the 1898 riots is because every single time in history, more times than not, when, a, when the black community was focused on family, focused on building, focus on having their own banks, focus on having their own businesses, focus on thriving. Ku Klux Klan, white people came, burned it down, burned it down. And this was during this Jim Crow era that you speak so highly of. And it's just very detrimental, I feel like, to the culture for you to be spewing out stupid stuff like that. And honestly, it's detrimental to the Trump party because you're not a viable source. You're not even truly a black man that we're looking at. Again, you could not even be married to the woman that you're married to now during Jim Crow. Here's the thing. We all make mistakes. We all speak out of, you know, out of turn or maybe, you know, say something that maybe we regret saying. But even after, you know, he obviously offended a lot of people. I've never once heard him come out and take accountability for maybe misspeaking or take accountability for referencing such a sensitive time for black people as something that should be looked at as positive. At least take the accountability, at least respect these black people that you speak so highly about and take accountability for misspeaking and making a poor judgment in a reference to a time where black people were being hung, killed, murdered, wrongfully accused, treated as slaves. Those nothing of that was a good time. And for you to, uh, he even referenced, you know, his father not being in the home and how that made him want to be a better father and to be in, you know, his kid's life and in the, you know, in the family home. But here's the thing. So many black males, especially and specifically during Jim Crow, were taken out of the black homes and hung and killed and murdered and, you know, had no power. So I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what part of Jim Crow was the part that you want us to emulate now. What part of it? Was it Emmett Till? You know, was it Megger Evers? Was like who like what was it? Like what was the time in which Jim Crow laws were active that you thought black people were doing so well? It's very sad. It's, it's actually very, very sad. Now, Representative Hakeem Jeffries basically spoke out against Representative Byron Donalds. And I was really, really here for that because I felt like, okay, great. Like, we cannot just let this, this 
rhetoric come out of um Byron Donald's mouth and nobody say anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was very proud of Representative Hakeem Jeffries. I felt like this was a great example of being able to, you know, stay professional, but still check somebody at the same time. And he was very factual. He gave, again, just like in Read Out, very factual, very evidence-based, make it make sense. Like, make it make sense. Anyway, y'all, let me know your thoughts um, regarding uh, Representative Byron Donald's comments. Let me know your thoughts uh, also regarding Representative Hakeem Jeffries' comments. And if you really feel like, I'm not even going to ask that question, honestly. Let me know your thoughts, y'all. Let me know if this has swayed your vote either way. And I'll see you in the comments.